Hello, everybody. It's uh, 3.15, so I think we'll get started. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm Stephen Ducker. I'm the uh, chairman and CEO of N Computing. And it's my pleasure to tell you an interesting story today, a story of uh, really revolutionary, uh, revolutionary and disruptive next generations in computing, which is related to virtualization and, by extension, the cloud. And uh, here we go. So first, I want to start by talking, although this is an interop show and you guys have read the pricey and you know that we're about low-cost desktops for virtualization environments, let me refresh you a bit with what it is that we do and the components of our technology. And then we'll kind of go back to the big picture. So first, we have a product called vSpace. Uh, think of vSpace as Citrix marries VMware and has a better looking kit. It is a uh, multimedia enhanced, performance enhanced, virtualization enhanced terminal services infrastructure, which is so efficient that we can run 16 users uh, with rich multimedia on a $400 desktop PC. Big claim, go to our website, look at a video, you'll actually see it. vSpace runs on virtually every Windows platform and runs under many ports of Linux. The second component of our technology is something called UXP. This is the transport mechanism by which we extract the virtual desktops from the shared uh, PC and deliver them down to the client devices. Some clever things about UXP is it was built from the beginning to provide a robust, complete PC-like user experience, including rich multimedia, and it was designed to operate across a number of different types of connection mechanisms, including Ethernet devices, such as the L300 that we're showing in our booth, PCI-related devices like our $70 uh, virtual desktop that has taken the education market by storm, and USB connected devices uh, to provide more flexibility in local connections. And then finally, there are the client devices themselves, and this makes us kind of unique because we're the first company that has combined the infrastructure on the software side with the actual client devices uh, to make sure that we could deliver a robust uh, uh, user experience. And so we have Ethernet, PCI, and USB client devices. Uh, we announced several uh, weeks ago that uh, we made our, our chip that powers these devices available to third parties like LG with their recently announced network monitors and several other very large OEMs who will be announcing products based on end computing chip technology and vSpace later this year. And end client, which is an unannounced product, and my marketing guys are probably all going to kill me right now, which is essentially a soft client that will work on any uh, Windows or Linux x86 environment or ARM-based environment for telephones, pads, and other sorts of cool devices that you'll see coming shortly. We have already sold two and a half million of these things. We are probably the largest virtualization company that you've never heard of. And in fact, these little <laughs> bubbles on this chart show you where those devices are being sold. Uh, and it's not surprising that the BRICS, the Brazil, Russia, India, China, are just eating these things like candy right now. And that the red pins show where end computing already has its own sales and support organizations uh, established, although 100% of our sales are through uh, uh, channel partners. We are already the largest provider of thin clients in the world. Uh, we always have to put a little asterisk next to it because up until very recently, our direct connect, our USB and PCI clients were not counted as thin clients because they weren't Ethernet. However, uh, IEC, uh, starting about uh, a year ago, footnoted their schedules to say, by the way, end computing, who's maybe the number four in uh, Ethernet clients, also sells these direct connect devices, and if you add the two, since Q2 of last year, we have been the largest provider of client devices in the industry. And we got lots of uh, fruit salad as well, uh, great awards, some of the most significant awards in the industry. In 
fact. The Wall Street Journal Tech Innovation Award, which is probably the number one technology award in the United States, was given to us in the computer systems category. And very interesting, the chief judge on the Wall Street Journal's panel was the CEO of VMware. So she clearly understood our contribution. Gartner named us the cool product in the client uh, sphere last year. Uh, Frost and Sullivan gave us a market share leadership award. We own 40% of the thin client virtualization market in India, which is a dynamic, growing economy, which in fact is going aggressively into the latest forms of virtualization and technology because they don't have legacy to worry about. They're moving from paper to technology. We'll talk more about this later. And we were just last week named one of the InfoWorld Green 15 because our devices aren't computers. They use one two, three watts of power. We'll talk more about this later. And where are those two and a half million seats? They're everywhere. They're in the enterprise, they're in factories, they're in retail, call centers, and education, which was the first and largest market that came to end computing. Not because there's anything unique about our solution for education, but ask yourself the question, who needs the largest number of workstations and has the least amount of money? Now, that's always education. Now, I know that the analyst core has generally been saying virtualization is not about saving money. Well, hogwash. Virtualization done with the right technologies is not just about saving money, it's about redefining everything about the economics of computing. A big idea, but one that we're now ready to talk about. So, you know, let's look at the history of the great ages of computing. You know, back in the 50s, it was the mainframe, where our cost per user in today's dollars is probably measured in the millions. Uh, what came after mainframe? Well, this thing called online uh, access, time sharing. Uh, those, anyone who's got some gray hair here maybe recommends, recognizes some, uh, remembers some tools like CICS, uh, IMSDB, uh, and TSO. Uh, basically, what's the concept? Multiple users sharing a very powerful central resource to reduce the cost per user. Does this sound familiar? Does this sound like the cloud? Does it sound like virtualization? This is the model on which we built our industry. And through the 70s, uh, the mainframes became repl were replaced in part by mini computers. And the result was a continuous progressive reduction in the cost per seat. Then came the PC, and as we know, everything changed. Uh, and in the 1990s, the PCs evolved from standalone devices into cooperative networking devices. Uh, but now, uh, to quote the Pythons, it's time for something completely different. And that's the virtualization revolution. But the virtualization revolution, you know, we've been talking about it now for almost five years. It's been the number one story in the IT press about what's the next big thing. But but about two years ago, the stories began to change to where's the beef? Why aren't we seeing any announcements of massive deployments of these kind of technologies? And the answer is very simple. It costs too much. And, uh, and, and in fact, in each and every step of the advance of, our techno of technology in our industry, in order for those new technologies to go mainstream, there must be some compelling reason which is usually expressed in lower purchase cost. You know, I, I'll ask a rhetorical question, but who here contemplates the reaction of their CIO or CFO if you walk in and say, well, for next year, what I'd like to really do is spend two to three times per seat what we spent last year, but don't worry, it's going to pay back over the next five years. Uh, you know, this is the reason why virtualization on the desktop hasn't gotten really started, as well as the fact that thin client computing, the progenitor, uh, achieved a whopping 2% of the total marketplace, enough to make some tremendously creative and successful companies like Citrix. We only hope that our contribution can be as great as theirs. Uh, but the fact is, 2% is the is how much of the market went there and for virtual desktops to go mainstream they can't cost more and what's more they shouldn't cost more 